and she says she loves to sparkle. So welcome, Alyssa. And then our second panelist is Camilla Antoine. She is a two diamond from San Antonio, Texas. She'll be in premiere nine years next month. She's married to Andre, they have two fabulous kids and granddaughters, and check out her earrings. Yeah, definitely. None of us would even be in this room at the same time in this one occurrence if somebody didn't share premiere with us. I can't even imagine how my life would be different. I mean, I don't even really want to think about it because I've been so blessed by premiere. We have the power to share an opportunity that can change someone's life for the better. Uh, if you think about it, it only takes one yes. So one person to say yes to that opportunity and for her to taste a little bit of success and then she's going to share that with somebody else and then that person's going to share and then that person's going to share and that the impact that we could have is endless so why aren't we sharing more i think that we get held up on this one teeny tiny word no and it's a pretty powerful word and we're going to come into contact with that scary little word quite a few times in this business whether it's in sponsoring or other things but it cannot and it will not break you you are so much stronger than that ladies i promise you we never know when premiere might fit into someone's life so if it's not now it could most definitely be later sometimes you might hesitate to share with them thinking that this might not be the right time maybe she's going through something in her life or maybe we think she doesn't have the money to start up whatever it might be but we automatically assume that she's not interested so we don't even give her an opportunity to make the decision for herself. So we're keeping her from what could potentially change her life for the better. Is Premiere for everyone? Absolutely not. But we need to be confident in ourselves and believe in Premiere so much that we can't help but share the business. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be responsible for keeping a blessing to myself. I don't want to be responsible for keeping a blessing to myself either. That's good stuff. Camilla, you've been in Premier for almost nine years, and I'm sure you've seen sponsoring go up and down on your team. What would you say to the jeweler who maybe hasn't sponsored in a while? Why should she start sharing now? I would ask her, what are you waiting for? Like, there's an amazing amount of tools that we have right now in Premier um, to make us successful. I think about my um, activity in the past year and evaluating all the changes that Premier has made and how those changes have benefited my business. And I've kind of narrowed it down to four key elements that I think are helpful, and this might help somebody out there. The first thing is, I think that we have to think and realize that our business is a very mobile business. And that is an asset. Because mm -hmm. nowadays, most of us are crazy busy. So on the go, we can make our businesses work. I was in the airport, um, headed to DC a few weeks ago, putting in orders while I sat at my gate waiting for the, phone, you know, for the plane to take off. That's huge. Um, the fact that we can set up in a coffee shop and show our jewelry right there. I did a show a few weeks ago at a Mexican restaurant. We were in a booth and it was me and two girls and I sold $300 worth of jewelry. So you have to recognize that we have something huge. A friend of mine does another direct sales business and let's just say it's not jewelry. And she's like, well, how can I set up in a booth? I was like, mm, you can't set those pots and pans up in a booth. I mean, I'm just saying. So, extremely valuable yep. uh, in your mobility of your business. Uh, the second thing I'll say is that uh, we have Jumpstart. I don't know how many out there have achieved Jumpstart. I know I have somebody on my team that hit it, and that cash incentive is real, okay? And so as you're talking to women who have very uh, real goals, real financial things that they're trying to go for, do not be afraid to use Jumpstart as an incentive to get those ladies to get fired up about their business. And I just love that opportunity. Um, the shine option, number three. So here's the thing. Last year, I know I wasn't the only one when they announced shine. We were all like, hmm, 45? I don't know, right? Um, because in Premiere, we are known to say, you know, have some skin in the game. 
But what I had to do a mindset shift and make, uh, make the understanding clear that the shine option really is just a continuum. It's a spectrum of investment options for the lady who sits across from you. And what it allows is ladies who maybe would never have had an opportunity to do premiere, it now gives them a chance to do that. I bet there's a few of you sitting in these seats right now because somebody gave you a $45 shine option. And um, yeah, I know, because I got some on my team. And so don't um, allow, don't let that keep you from sharing that. Now have a plan in place for those girls. Um, and now they announced some things that are gonna help us upgrade them, right? Uh, but have some plans in place on how you're going to help her and do some group events to, to build up her um, her profit so that she can upgrade, but don't be afraid to offer it. It's a, it's a continuum. Um, and the last thing I'll say is that sparkle plan. Uh, I did not give my notes to Bob, so thank you for doing that, my sparkle plan plug, because I think it's found on the university website, but we should all be using that. It is yes. a blueprint. It gives a step-by-step basically instructions on how to help a new jeweler get started. So whether you've been in Premiere for a week or you've been in Premiere for 10 years, this is gonna give you the tool that you need to walk a lady step by step through how to get started. So I say all in all, some people get nervous about all the innovation, but that's what keeps us fresh, y'all. People like to be on the cutting edge and we need to be that. So do not be afraid of the fact that, yes, we are putting out some innovative stuff, but the heart of Premiere hasn't changed. That is, we're still about enriching every single life, all right? So we're just doing it in a new and fun way. It's so true. We were just saying backstage how there has never been a better time for a jeweler to be set up for success than she is right now. That is amazing. Alyssa, I know that you find most of your prospects at your events. How do you use those events to find people who are interested in Premiere? Right, I do find most of my prospects at my shows, whether it's in home or online, either way. Um, but that is not to say that you have to have a ton of shows to sponsor. I know that you probably know, just as I know, some friends that are in my normal group, my circle, that I that think I think that they could use Premiere. So we could use our circle of friends, but our circle only goes so far. So shows are a great way to meet new people and expand those circles. One of the best and easiest groups that people to share with is our hostesses, because clearly they already love the jewelry, they already decided to have a show with you, so with me, I have been using Amy Park System. Shout out to Amy, wherever you're at, you did awesome. Uh, I, so we contact our hostesses a month before the show, and it's a simple text, and like Amy said, you text them and say, hey, will you watch the five minute video on my website? I just wanna know if you'd like to make the money instead of me. So that gets her gears turning. She's thinking, you know, and sometimes they were gonna respond that they did watch, but sometimes they didn't or you don't know that they did, and you later find out that they actually did. So sometimes they're listening even though you don't think they are. So you share that with them, and that allows us enough time to turn that into a training show if she does decide to try it out. Now when I'm at my show, I'm always listening for needs. Let's face it, women talk, so we just need to be there to listen and keep our ears open. So women come into Premiere for a variety of reasons, and sometimes we get held up thinking that they only want to come in for the same reason we did. And that's just not always the case. And sometimes we can do a ladies a disservice by thinking this way. Can most women use the money? Yes. But some women are going to come in for the friendship and encouragement. Some women, are, some women are going to come in for the awesome trips we take. Some women just flat out love all the jewelry. And then you know what? There's some women that are going to come in because they need to come to know Christ. So when you're at a show, what are the ladies saying? Do you hear ladies talking about how tired she is from working overtime, how, how much she hates her boss, or do you have a lady that's literally jumping up and down over every single piece of jewelry that you show? Because we have those people. So be on the lookout, listen to what's going on, and Premier can be so many needs. We just have to be prepared to offer all the options. <coughs> that's great. So you listen you, for the need, and then once you kind of hear that need, what do you actually do at your show to your sponsoring activity, per se? Right, so when I'm at my shows, um, I do always like to take a little time to share about Premiere. So it, um, sometimes I'll use a big money sponsoring activity, but my favorite way is simply sharing my story. Women connect with stories. They're gonna find one, um, one point from my story, from Camilla's story, from Jenny's story that they're gonna relate with, and that's what's gonna get them interested. So I start out by saying that everybody knows somebody who could use some extra money, and that's a classic Greg Tara line, if anybody's ever heard it. But then I'm gonna share that I used to work Premiere full-time 
or sorry, I used to work Premier alongside a full-time job from the beginning, and then Premier became my full-time job so that I could stay home with my kids. I keep it simple and tell them about the 50% commission, that there's no quotas, and that you can start for only 45 bucks a month. So I know there's a lot more details in this business, but sometimes from the beginning, I think we can shove too much information down their throats. So share the basics, and then if they want to chat later, you can definitely plan a time to do that. I also like to offer curiosity packets at my shows, which is just a little envelope. It has information about the business, it has your first 10 home shows, and then a $10 gift card. So I set those on the coffee table after I share about the business and say, take one if you're interested, or if you think you know somebody who might be. Now surveys are also a huge tool that we can use in sponsoring and also you know, for bookings and other, and other things. But the last thing I do before shopping time is I go through that survey step by step, question by question, and the last question on their survey says, would you want some more information about the business or would you like to try this out for only 45 bucks a month? And from there, I'm gonna know if they have any interest at all because I collect those surveys and go through them really quickly before checkout time. So at checkout, I'm gonna casually ask them, would you want, more, want some more information about the business? I know you might not be interested, but you might know about somebody who is. And you know what, you need to ask every single person, even the ones who mark no. Because even if they mark no, they might just be too scared to mark maybe or yes. You never know, you might have that little thought in the back of their head. So don't be scared to share. But from checkout, I'm gonna plan a way to share the business with that person, whether it's gonna be meeting them for coffee or just sending them the online video. That's great. Well, when you talk about surveys, you are speaking my love language. I love a good survey at the shows. And this is great for when you have a full calendar of shows. But I know, you know, I'll take this to Camilla, for example, not everybody has a full calendar of shows. How do you look for people who have a need in Premiere outside of the show? That's a good question. Uh, I think Gina did a good job showing us that you can retail outside of your jewelry shows. But it is possible to sponsor and share outside of your jewelry show. So I always uh, say, and I think probably heard it from uh, Elizabeth Draper somewhere along the lines where you have to be a contact collector, right? So as you live your life, we should be collecting, uh, connecting with women on a day-to-day -day basis. I hear people say all the time, I need to get out of my circle. I need to get out of my circle. But you don't realize you encounter so many people every day outside of your circle. And so when you are invited to a uh, book study or a book club, join it. When you are invited to uh, be you know, part of, um, I don't know, it could be anything. When you are invited to things, just say yes to things, right? Not to say you have to sign up for more duties, but try to be a little bit more social and get connected to the women that you're meeting and be authentic. You know, you don't wanna just say, oh yeah, I'll do this book study just so I can get new hostesses. That wouldn't be right. Uh, but you, you do want to find new ways to connect with ladies, and as you do that, um, you'll find that you're going to be exposed to a lot of, uh, a lot of different women. Um, one of my weaknesses, I'll just go ahead and put it out there, I don't walk up to random strangers and just say, would you like to be a jeweler? Yeah, I'm not doing that. So I have to find ways that make me feel comfortable that I'm going to meet new women. So I started a couple of years ago just kind of evaluating my own personal social circles and the women that I am connected to or just the subgroups that I'm a part of. And I kind of listed a few. Um, when I think about who I am, I'm an educator by profession. I'm a mom of a college kid. I'm a young empty nester. Uh, I'm a military spouse. My husband's retired. And so I started writing these things down and saying, how can I meet women where they are that are in these subgroups? And so about a year ago, my team and I, we put together a Salute and Sparkle month-long event where we were con uh, in contact with women who were military connected. Because me, again, as being a veteran spouse, and I have lots of jewelers in my team who are active duty and reservists, we know that w women in, in, uh, connected to the military really need premiere. And so we did some Facebook events online, um, and we did a big lingo event where it was all about just sharing what premiere can offer. Because a lot of those women, like you said, Alyssa, may not need the financial piece, but the fellowship is incredible. Um, and shout out to Aisha Dudley, who always talks about how her business goes with her wherever she goes. That's a huge marketing point to a woman who may not know where she's gonna be living in the next four years. So we were able to do those events, and we, we, we really use it to serve those ladies because they need to be appreciated and loved on, and we did lots of giveaways. So just think outside of the box in terms of different groups that you might be part of. 
Um, I used to be a single mom when I first had my son. Why not do a ladies' night out for single moms? Give them a cool penny auction where they can bid on jewelry that you just bought for five and six dollars at a penny and then share the business with them. Get them to come and have fun. It's all about having fun, right? And so I figure if you can get the jewelry, get the OP, get the marketing plan in front of ladies and meet them where they are. If it's a group of teachers that you wanna reach out to, find an area near the school. Set up something where you're giving them school supplies as, as prizes, right? Who doesn't need school supplies when you're a teacher? Amen, right? So make sure that you do those things to kind of cater to that crowd and I think that makes a big difference. You're so right. There are really so many women out there that we meet every day that we don't realize that we can connect with and who have a need for Premier. And I think what a lot of jewelers struggle with is when they finally meet someone who kind of shows some interest, it's the what do I say? And more importantly, how do I close the conversation? So how do you finish that? Good question. So after I've sat with someone to share the business, whether it's in a group event like I mentioned earlier, or just something one-on-one, -on -one, um, I always want to use a survey, those good old surveys. Y'all need to use surveys. Um, because you can't, you can't read their mind. And sometimes it's hard to read their facial expressions. Uh, sometimes you get a poker face because maybe they're processing it, right? So I always have a survey, and I basically round it out with the question of, now that I've shared the information with you, I've shared the perks, the new perks to, to getting started, does it sound like something that you would be interested in on a scale of one to 10? One being, I'd rather have my wisdom teeth pulled out. Five being, sign me up right now, where do you see yourself? So I kind of ask that question in the same way y'all giggle, they giggle. Um, most people don't say one, so that helps eliminate that. Uh, and then I ask them why they are the number that they are so that I can get a feel for where they're at. Um, if they say yes to me, obviously I'm gonna schedule an event and say let's get your launch scheduled. But I tend to sometimes get, let me think about it, or I wanna talk to my husband about it, and while I have them in front of me, I wanna capture that moment. And so I'll say to them, um, that's fine, I completely understand. How about we go ahead and pencil in a show? Um, it can be your soft launch if, you, if you're on board. And if not, you can have this great show and you can get the free jewelry, no problem. Um, and I whip out my calendar because I'm crazy busy and odds are she is too. So while I have her in front of me or on the phone, I wanna go ahead and pencil in. Ladies, use the word pencil in, it's less intimidating. That's just, I'm just saying. Um, because the minute I say I'm gonna you know, pin you in my calendar, they start to get nervous and they don't want to necessarily commit, so I say that pencil in. Um, and if they tell me flat out no, then I will tell them that, um, you know, thank you for listening, not a problem, please keep me in mind, this is my referral. I'll usually have some type of referral option for them. Give them a $10 gift card if they are able to get a friend to listen to the marketing plan. So always have an idea of what you're going to say. Something for your yes, something for your maybe, and something for your no. Well, I would sign up with you in two seconds. There's no question about that. But I know not everyone does that. And I know follow-up, we've all heard the fortunes in the follow-up. So listen, what is your follow-up system? Well, everybody is different. And like Camilla said, we're all at different places. We have different circles. We're in different situations. So we really need to listen to the specific person, engage their interest based on their specific situation. So once I get any idea of how she's feeling, you know, she's super excited, ready to go, then like Camilla said, we pencil her in on the calendar, and we're gonna start all the steps for successful hostess coaching. If she's a little hesitant, maybe she needs to talk to her husband, maybe she needs to think about it, you know, save a couple hundred bucks, whatever it might be, then take a step back and plan to follow up with her. And you have to remember, it's not about your timing, it's about her timing. So it's whatever works best for her. The most important part, and the hardest part about following up is actually following up. Because it's easy for us to chalk up a later or not now as a complete loss, when this just isn't always the case. So do yourself a favor and make sure you're using whatever system it is, your phone, your calendar, your sticky note system, and make sure you're gonna follow up when you said you would. That's some good stuff. Can you see why these two are so successful? Yeah. Well, what I see from them is they are they work hard to keep a full calendar of shows and they have a follow-up system. And what I love about that is that is something all of us can do. So please thank my two fabulous panelists.